Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Lazbar. This is Black Cloak, issue number one. And I had to reread it because I read it like, I don't know, a month ago or something, maybe two months ago, and I totally blanked on everything that happened. 100%. I blinked so much on it that I picked the thing up again today because I was going to read issues two and issues three, and I was like, you know what? I need to know what happened so I can make sense of this stuff. And I hope that by telling you some of this, it will all solidify my memory and I won't forget about it. Also, there is in fact some boote on the cover of issue number one. Uh, it's not like salacious or anything, but YouTube does not like booty. YouTube hates booty, so we have to cover the booty up. The booty has been covered. We start off with this great shot of the city of Kyros. Now, Kyros is like a city where the last survivors of the world... Are hanging out and you've got like elves and mermaids and humans and every other kind of fey creature you can think of they're all living here you kind of get like the gist of it we got like the super high place and the further down you go the lower in the food chain you are you know what i'm talking about yeah it's called discrimination we put the slums on the bottom naturally like that's where they like to do that kind of stuff now, we got uh, the mermaid pool, and the mermaids are kind of like uh, the mermaids from Greek myth. Like, these are not like happy-go-lucky, oh, we're pretty fish people kind of mermaids. These are the, we're going to eat you mermaids after we lure you to your death so you drown in the ocean kind of mermaids. Like, Odysseus definitely ran up against these mermaids. He was like, my men, put wax in your ears so that you can't hear the mermaids. And then tie me to the mast of the ship so that I can hear them because, you know, I'm the boss and I want that privilege for myself. And so the mermaids throw a body up out of the water and along with that body is a dead mermaid. So what's going on here? What's going on? Well, we got our heroine here. I think her name is Phaedra, if I remember right. And uh, she's uh, like a cop. That's what the black cloak means. They call them black cloaks. They're cops. She gets her morning coffee, and then there's an emergency. We got a dead elf. A dead elf with a royal tattoo. A dead elf with a royal tattoo who used to be her fiancé. Yeah. Things got crazy real quick in this book. They absolutely did. Like, we just got dumped some heavy, heavy stuff. And so, since she's a cop, she's got to do cop stuff. What does cop stuff mean? Cop stuff means she's got to go do interrogations. Uh, the art of this book... Not quite sure how I want to put it. I don't always like the art in this book, but it always works out in the end and looks okay. Like sometimes it's a little extra undetailed. Like here, it kind of reminds me of, there was a uh, Star Trek comic, oh, four years ago, like 2018, 2019. And it was called like the Q Wars or something like that. And it was all about... Uh, Q playing a game with Squire Trelawney and some other immortal beings and kind of throwing the universe into chaos and yada, yada, yada. But the art in that book was kind of like this, where sometimes our finished art looked more like it was the sketch or the thumbnail type situation, and then it just been colored in. Like, that's kind of what some of this art feels like. And I don't like that, but it always kind of works out okay in the end. I'm not kidding. We get, like, detective stuff going on here, man. We're very much in, like, a police procedural here in issue number one. Here's what's going on with the mermaids. We got the mermaids calling out, trying to get people lured down to their death. And so the people that work near the mermaids have music to drown it out. These uh, flashback sequences are pretty cool because they're all done in an alternate color pattern, so you know they're flashbacks. But uh, our heroine here, she was kicked out of her home. She's, uh, like, a royal... And she was exiled. Now, she, since she's a cop, she's got to go in and do some interrogation cop stuff. Uh, where she meets with the queen, who, uh, you know, she knows. And she gets knocked out right away. And so, we're kind of setting up... It's somewhere between, like, a police procedural. Like, there's a lot of police procedural type stuff happening. But there's also, like, film noir type stuff happening, too. Like, just getting cracked on the head and waking up somewhere else. That's definitely like channeling film noir. Like, how many times has Sam Spade been cracked on the head, waking up somewhere else, you know? 
And I don't know how I didn't remember what happened in this. Like, I got to this point uh, of the end of the book, I should say. I got to the end of the book, and I was like, huh, that was pretty good. Let me go read the next one. Like, that was my final reaction. So, apparently the first time it didn't stick, but the second time it did. Not really sure how I feel about that. But I will go ahead and say, there were some parts in this, because this is like a double-thick issue. This thing is thick. There were some parts in here where I was kind of like, eh, I'm going to just kind of skim over the text. And then there were other parts where I just like zoomed right in on it. And I'm like, boom, laser focused. Oh, I'm devouring it. So a little spotty, a little spotty. But I think overall, I had a good time reading it. It was okay. You know, I got done. And I think my only complaints were just, I wish the art was way cooler. Especially because right before I reread this, I had just read Noctera. So, you know, I'm coming off as some Tony S. Daniel art that was absolutely fantastic. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. You know, leave a comment down below. Uh, be sure to smash that bell button thing for notifications. I think that's what the YouTubers like to say. And uh, I sure hope to see you again next time. Until then, bye-bye.